<laughs> All knobbly and ribbed, like ripped for your pleasure kind of situation going That's on here. That's your third one for today, buddy. You're done. Like, no more nuendos. <laughs> you're, you can't. You're done, dude. <laughs> Jesus, man. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series. Today we are working on the lovable little Duke 390. I love this motorcycle. Look how it pops in this new studio setting. Look how amazing this all looks. Spite, <laughs> isn't it look good in here? Yeah, suddenly like we're, we're pros or something. Yeah, it's like we're professionals. Uh, it's almost like I got this office space for exactly this reason. Uh, so today <laughs> we're putting on a slip-on exhaust on the Duke 390. Check it out. Looks it's pretty good. Layer up some beautiful B-roll shots of it as well. I like these Leo Vinci megaphone style with the black and then the um, brushed stainless steel cap. I think yeah. they look really nice. I like the one we did on the 400 on the Ninja that had the little uh, grill at the back of it. That looked yep, pretty cool. The little GP screen. Yeah, that looked cool. Uh, but we had those megaphones as well on the FC07, the dual megaphone. So I like the look of it. Uh, so super easy install today, gonna be a lot of fun. But again, just wanna remind you guys that we are giving this motorcycle away for free. And we're actually running a special promotion for merchandise. So if you guys didn't know, the best way to support us is on yamanube.co. But if you wanna do a one-time, one-off, you can go to yamanubemerch.com and get a t-shirt, a hat, whatever you want and every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win but for now if you do the code triple 2020 on the website i'm going to give you 2x entries and 10 percent off so check it out we got all these cool designs spent a lot of money on it with the designer professionally done <laughs> really would love you guys to check them out but let's get started All right guys, so a slip-on is one of the best things you can do to a bike. It's a really simple install. So Spite, what's one of the reasons why you'd want to do a slip-on? Well, first of all, obviously price. Slip-ons are a whole lot cheaper. Uh, you're not having to deal with all of the head pipes, the cat delete, whatever. You just buy a little can and a link pipe and it goes right on. So there's a lot less material cost, a lot less production cost that they're trying to recoup. So to you, Probably two, three, maybe even $400 cheaper over that nice, fancy, full system that they make. They're just enormously expensive. Yeah. And then uh, you're going to save a little bit of weight, not much, but really the main difference is you're going to get a, a nice little bark out of your bike. Yeah. Um, and if, you're, if all you want to do is hear your bike on the road, there's no reason to spend the extra coin because you're going to get more or less the same sound. It will be a little bit quieter since we're not deleting this catalytic converter in here, but it will still have a bark. You'll get all the pops and cracks that you want out of a pipe, again, without doing all of the work of pulling the headers off and all that stuff. Totally. And I think the other big thing as well is uh, no fuel management, right? Exactly. So super big cost savings there. So I think it's one of the best simple mods you can do to your bike. Just kind of wake it up a little bit. So like Spite said, if you're a street rider, just want to hear your bike a little bit more, definitely go with the slip-on option. I think unless you're going for like a full competition bike or a race bike or a track bike, I really don't see the point for a full system for a street bike. We did it on the XSR 700 because Leo Vinci is nice and they gave us a free, a free full system, so we used it, but I normally would just put a slip-on on a street bike. So let's get into this install. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty dang simple. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Alrighty guys, so the first step to putting on, how warm is this thing by the way? I just thought of that, not too bad. No, that's fine. Oh, okay, so, you know, it was a little bit warmer when we did the exhaust uh, sound clip. It's cold. Okay, um, so the first step to doing a slip, just making sure we're not gonna burn our hands here. <laughs> first step to doing a slip on is to just remove a couple bolts. So I think the first one we should do is probably this top one and then this back one right here. Excellent. I think it's literally just the two. I think it's just the two, let's do it. Let's get our gloves on, let's be professional. Today. Sure, why not? Yeah. This is lovely. It's freaking beautiful, man. Let's get in there and just... <laughs> so good. It's just so nice seeing everything. You just, mm -hmm. oh, this one I need, this one I need. Great. 
doesn't feel like a 12. Is that not a 12? Did the Austrians do something silly? Is it a 10? Or is it a 13? Feels like it's an 11. So guys, the first thing I'm doing here is unbolting this little uh, hex bolt down here, this little Allen key. I believe it is a, no, oh, it doesn't have a measurement on there. It's probably a six. Looks, looks like, like a six. six. Yeah, looks about a six. I just unbolted it, now we're just undoing it. This is already coming nice and loose. Let's what do you got working up there? You need something to hold mm, on to that? This, the, the Austrians have done an infuriating thing and used two completely different sized nuts on there. Oh, that is, that. That's why we have the socket wrench set, yeah? Yep. So we've got a 13 in the back and a 12 in the front. Oh boy, that's torqued that in there pretty good. On there, there we go. go. So slip-ons are really great because it's typically just like two or three different bolts and you just pop them right off. Um, one of the most easy and satisfying installs, I'd say, because it takes about 30 minutes to do and then you get an instant satisfaction of hearing something different. You know what I'm noticing uh, yeah. as I'm looking at this, and maybe we can move the camera. So this is kind of neat. Right here, this arm is actually completely detachable from the passenger peg right here on two bolts. Mm -hmm. So if you end up with an exhaust that's a nice shorty that comes out the side, it's, you can remove the hanger mm. without removing the passenger pegs, which a lot of bikes don't do. And that's good on you, KTM. I was riffing on you for having a 13 and a 12, <laughs> but this makes up for it. <laughs> but now that this bolt's free, I think this whole exhaust is ready to come. Ready to come, yeah, Jesus, ready, right? ready to Ready to be removed, <laughs> shall I say. That's nice and loose back here. All right, let's. Wiggle her free, there she goes. That's it. Another That's... RC390 stock system, or Duke 390 stock system. I think I've removed like three of them. It says RC ones. on it. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it probably is the exact same one. It looks like the exact same pipe, yeah. All right, off to the pile of pipes it goes. And for those of you out there who maybe don't want to do a slip on, uh, you totally can just slide the pipe off and just run it like that for a little bit just to see how it sounds. Not a recommended long-term solution. I did that on my R3. It was fun, but- You were no. one of those guys. I was one of those guys, uh, but not a good long-term solution. I'd say point counterpoint to uh, running with no exhaust on there. It will work. It will work. It's going to be a little bit louder again because you have the catalytic converter in there, but you're going to look a little silly because you just have a giant empty pipe out here. Yeah. Kind of just going to nowhere. So it looks a little unfinished. Um, yeah. If I were you, what I would do is I would just take it for like, uh, take it out to the edge of your garage, open it up and just listen to it for a second and then put a pipe on there. Yeah. Unless you do want to be that absolute hooligan. <laughs> Definitely. Let's get this, uh, the new system on there. Yep. First things first is we got to get the hanger on the megaphone so that we can actually Hang it. Let's get this. You wanna spread that for me? <laughs> this is your second weird reference in the day. As, as long as we're hitting all of our innuendo. Yeah. Just, there we go. Yeah, just leave us a little bit of wiggle room there. Mm -hmm. favorite part. Yeah, and then we get to do the spring. All right, so for those of you who don't know, this is what's called a mechanics pick. And you can see it's got a nice little hook there. It's what you're supposed to use for this, not pliers like we have been in the past. <laughs> so this should be infinitely easier to get this job done, specifically because it has that little hook on there. And look at that. So easy. Spite's a happy boy. This is, this made me so happy. <laughs> Easy piece. And then when you're done, you put it back on the wall. <laughs> I 
All right, Spite, so it looks like we're doing a little bit of surgery on the bike. What's going on? So uh, you just heard it with the baffle in, and I'm going to pull the baffle out, but unfortunately, it's got a little weld on the bolt, so it's not gonna stand up to a high-speed cutting edge. Mm -hmm. So we should get a nice little shot of sparks coming out of here, um, and that's actually why I've covered the pipe so that this won't uh, shoot fire all over it. It's actually yeah. all gonna go out this way, which is why the cloth is covering the tire. Yeah, and just so you guys know, having a little weld on the baffle, super common practice, you see it in a bunch of different exhausts, and this is actually the way you can get them off and get it to be a little bit more loud and cool sounding, so yep. let's do it. Awesome. All right, and as you can see, I've got my spectacles on here, so I don't have uh, anything hit me in the face. That would be bad. Start slow. Get us a little divot and then we go fast. There we go, and we're through it just like that. Now let's crack that nut out of here and get on the road. Oh, it's a four. First try, baby. You gotta love it. And so these, since they're welded in, they don't actually need to be torqued down super hard. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's already turning really, really easily. Bet I can actually, yep, I can turn it just with my fingers. There you go, and baffle. All right guys, baffle is out now. Let's see how it sounds. Alrighty guys, so there you have it. Pretty easy to install, sounds really good. And then that little touch at the end taking off the baffle, I think really sealed the deal. Sounds super brappy and nice. What do you think? Yeah, I think the only thing now is to go get it out on the road, see what it sounds like under load. Yeah, yeah, because an exhaust sounds cool whenever you've got it on the bike and neutral, just revving it up. But then to really hear how it sounds, you want to have your helmet on, earplugs in and see how it kind of sounds on the bike. So let's go do that. Sounds like a good idea. And I think we should take along a special guest with us today. Sure, why not? Yeah. Okay, Spite, today we're taking a special guest because we haven't been on the channel in a while. Well, I did a vlog on it the other day, right? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But uh, I think it'd be fun if you rode the Busa, so. S sounds good, let's do it. <laughs> no qualms, you're just like, F it, let's go. Yeah, man, time to, time to get my 1300 cc's on. Yeah, walking out here is always, I'm always like, man, I'm, you know, living a dream for sure. It's usually a little bit more organized in here, guys. We've got the bikes moved around because we're filming and my DRZ is in pieces for reasons. Yeah. Because it's a DRZ. That's why it's in pieces. Look at that. Look at that race bike next to you, though. Oof. Yeah, who's, no, that's quite sexy right there. Who's, whose bike is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we'll cut this because I don't want people to see. Well, I got, I got to get you wheeling that big pig out of here. Look at that. Uh. <laughs> uh. This sucks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we'll do, do it, it under engine power because f wheeling this sucker out. Oh, okay, Boosa boy. Got to flex a little bit. Look at, this. Look, at this. Look, at, look at this thing, dude. It looks so absolutely ridiculous. You know, so, the white lettering actually comes out pretty nice, I got to say. Yeah. yeah. The Yammy Chan. I've learned so much about uh, like anime girls and all that stuff from our Discord boys, like <laughs> the, the lollies or whatever, the, all that stuff. Someone was someone was talking shit about it on a uh, on the uh, on the uh, podcast we did because I said that one bike that well, I don't remember what bike we were looking at, but I said it was like the lolly of motorcycles or something like that. Uh -huh. And people are like, "God, Yami is such a fucking weeb." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't even really watch anime. I just, I have like secondhand weed poisoning from Discord. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in the final cut. Alrighty, we'll pick up this video doing what everybody says is impossible to do with these little bikes. Some highway duty. I've never felt like the Duke struggled on the highway. Nope. 
and you've had this bike for like a week now. You're doing some long-term stuff with it, um, but you feel like even if you use a bigger guy, it works just fine on the highway, right? Yeah, no, I rode it up on the highway this morning. Uh, yeah, that's right, was, yeah. It was uh, just totally fine to sit there and be happy, you know? Yep. Uh, it did feel like it wanted to stay a little bit lower, like 65 to 70 is kind of its butter zone. Beyond that is a little bit not fun. Uh, especially yeah, I don't right like riding this thing at like 90, that's for sure. But to your point, is 65, 70? Great. Yo. But, uh, you know, it's completely fine. You got plenty of passing power. Yeah. Over here, we'll do uh, just a slight little roll on in fourth gear to hear it. Sounds great with this pipe. Sounds really, really great. It's like you were saying, it fits the character of this bike really, really well. Um, it's like it's meant to have a, a bit of a louder, brappier kind of sound to it. Yup. I think I think that's the key when you're looking for an exhaust, is find one, you know, do your little research online, but really try and find a pipe that is going to match the, the look and feel and sound that you feel like your bike wants to have. Yeah, and it's just so crazy how this thing now with this exhaust on it, it really does feel like I'm riding a little baby dual sport and I just want to do wheelies and stuff with it, you know? <laughs> what was that, fourth gear? That was third. Third? And that was like maybe half throttle. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yep. I wasn't even giving it anything. That was... God, this bike is silly. Yeah. It's just, it's just great to pull out of the shop every once in a while and be like, my God, this has so much pulling power. Yep. Just the freight train of motorcycles. And here I come on the Duke. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> In that full tuck there. <laughs> you got three more cylinders and about a thousand more cc than me <laughs> but i'm having just as much fun i'm here on the highway chilling no worries in fact i would say that that's a little bit more fun because on this goddamn just rocket ship death machine you know you actually <laughs> got to think about what you're doing yeah hey remember we got to be careful what we say about the boost unless we stoke the ire of boost boys around the world Although oh chime God. in the comments and write us dissertations about why it's actually, actually the greatest motorcycle ever made. Y'all are crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this little bike's so rad, man. I feel like if I was just doing urban style stuff and like low speeds, like I would love a Duke 390. Mm -hmm. Like since we live in Texas, you know, we got big wide highways and you definitely want to pick up the speed every once in a while. But, you know, I'm imagining somewhere like San Francisco or maybe New York. The Duke is the way to go. These bikes rule. Oh yeah, totally. Down six gears here, wrapping every single one of them. It does sound quite nice with that pipe. Yeah, this is great. For a slip-on, it took us 30 minutes and now I get this sound out of it. I'm very pleased. <laughs> this little thing's so sweet. How's it feel uh, with the new slip-on? Any kind of like difference? I mean, you're probably making, if any extra, just like a quarter of a tenth of a horsepower, but. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's what I call the butt dyno effect, you know? Like I, I feel like it's faster, but really only because, you know, it's just more auditory. Ooh, that was a nice Z. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. That old Damn, one, that we, orange one? We were, we were just talking about those on the Discord the other day. Man, those are, oh, I love the shape on those. Um, yeah, so like because the auditory stimulation is higher, it does feel faster to me, but I don't know if it's necessarily any faster. I also haven't ridden this bike in like 10 days or so, or 12 or four, two weeks. I don't remember, I can't remember the last time I took the Duke out for a little rip. Um, but I gotta say, from my own memory of like the R3 and the MT03 and the Ninja 400, this is by far the pokiest one of the bunch for sure. Absolutely. Like, because it's so lightweight and because of that single, like I'm here in fourth gear, it just picks up and moves really low on the revs, which I really like. And it's just so light and flickable through a corner. Yeah. It feels like it's nothing. It requires like hardly any bar input to just get it over on the side. It just goes right in. I was saying earlier uh, off camera before we got started, if I had taken my MSF on the Duke, it would have been just, <laughs> I got a little sideways there. 
If I had taken my MSF on the Duke, it would have been so just confidence inspiring. Because yeah. it's so light and so easy to get your foot down, but it also is just easy to balance. Yeah, it has just about the perfect set of ergonomics for a beginner rider. It's not too tall and upright like an adventure bike or a dual sport where, you, where your arms are like up here, you know, and your seat seated up like this or something, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, it just has, you know, really approachable and friendly ergonomics and an engine that's not too powerful, but just powerful enough for you to have fun with it. Um, I think beginners who have never ridden a motorcycle might jump on this thing and in first gear might be a little bit intimidated by it, honestly, because it is a bit pokey, you know? It does have quite a bit of punch to it. Yeah, so if you've never ever ridden a motorcycle or driven a fast car or something with a little bit more performance, first gear on the Duke, you might feel like, whoa, this thing's got some get up and go. But that'll probably, you'll probably get over that in a good like two months and you'll just feel like it's normal. And then you'll be like Spite over here just, you know, ripping around on a 170 horsepower missile. Just give it a little and I immediately start walking away. <laughs> but then again, I get it in a curve and I'm like, ah, no, let's take it at 45. <laughs> uh, be careful, man. You're going to get all the Booster Boys angry. You can handle the curves, bro. You can the Booster the is so much dude. more capable than everybody else in your audience. <laughs> you simply do not possess the skills or the willpower to ride the Booster. <laughs> They treat it like it's like Excalibur or something, you know? Yup. <laughs> you need to be born with the right blood to ride the Busa. Yeah, it, it has to choose its right. Yeah, even these bigger sweepers where a lot of these smaller bikes tend to feel a little bit underpowered and kind of wonky. Uh, I, the Duke is awesome in these big sweeping curves, man. It just feels so nice to just flick it over, get it on the side. It has plenty of power to punch out of the corner. Ooh, little Lambo here on the left some cool cars today yeah i'm pleasantly surprised by the the sound out of this pipe and then just the feeling the duke gives me fourth gear like mid revs like mm -hmm. plenty of fun to be had it also just looks great it's a drop dead sexy bike the busa yeah i know man it's just absolutely gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> what a great looking machine huh all knobbly and ribbed like ribbed for your pleasure kind of situation going that's on here that's your third one for today buddy you're done like no more <laughs> nuendos you're you can't you're done dude you can't be doing that now i got my hazards on there we go yeah i mean it's just such a standout looking bike you know like it's just it really pops it's such a cool little bike my only knock against it is that the wires in the engine just kind of look a little weird like it feels like they should be kind of tucked away and hidden uh, it's more so on the other side, but other than that, it looks great. Yeah. Jesus, man. Little bike really lifts, huh? Yup. Already second gear. I'm practicing on the sled too much. Let's let him get away for a little bit. wide open for a good like eight seconds that was awesome and you're about two car lengths ahead of me after like <laughs> one just like squeeze of the throttle yeah there he goes Alrighty guys, wrapping up our thoughts here on the Duke 390's exhaust and uh, just you know a little bit more thoughts on the bike Super punchy, super fun. It sounds really kind of brappy and cool now. It really gives it that, you know, supermoto character to it. Spite, what do you think? I think it's great, you know. Uh, just the whole package is coming together. Um, it's already a bike that put so many smiles on my face when I was riding it. And just everything that we do just makes that grin a little bit wider. And, you know, now that we're off the bike, you can actually see that this pipe is a nice amber now already. Mm -hmm. After being just that really, you know, regular silver steel look. Yeah. I think it's just great, you know? Yeah. I, I think uh, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. It's hard to say anything bad about this new system. Uh, I think especially if you get a slip-on, do take out the baffle. Pick up yourself a little Dremel kit. It's really, I mean, you saw it in the video. It's really simple to do. Just yeah. a little bit of prep and just time and effort just to do it. And it really makes it worth it. 
Uh, if you want, if you can take a look in here, uh, you can see all down in there. Yeah. It looks super sick. You can all see all the way down to the spark arrestor. Yeah. It's just a great little pipe on a great little bike. Yeah. So with that, guys, thanks so much for checking out today's video. Remember, you can get 2x entries and 10% off on YambiNewBurst.com using the code TRIPLE2020. Hit the link down below so you can get entered to win this bike, the XSR, and the Street Triple. And with that, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later.